Hello again and welcome back to my shop. I have a really good friend at work and his wife is a huge fan of Stephanie Myers and her Twilight series. She and her sister are such big fans that they travel to Forks, Washington each year for the Twilight or Stephanie Myers Day, I guess it is. Uh, and while there, they, they visit the town of Forks, Washington and they also visit La Push Beach as I understand a good part of the story takes place in those two locations. I've never read the Twilight series so I know that it is a vampire based romance. Uh, beyond that, I don't know much about it, but uh, I do have a small project associated with Twilight. While visiting La Push Beach, my friend's wife and his sister picked up a couple of pieces of driftwood. These were floating around on the beach, or floating around in the surf, and they brought them back, and they have some girlfriends who are also huge fans of the series. What they've asked me to do is turn one slim lining pin and 10 keychains that they would like to distribute to their friends and of course each of them will keep uh, a souvenir as well but uh, something to kind of distribute that is a little piece of La Push Beach and of course Twilight and the Stephanie Myers weekend and so I'm going to work on that today I'm going to take this driftwood and I'm going to get it sized down on my saw uh, into proper size for pin blanks and then we're going to turn this and we're going to make a video of the complete process because the ladies have said that they would love also to be able to show this piece of driftwood that each of their friends has seen turn into the souvenir that they're going to get to keep um, of their favorite series. So that was a rather long introduction. I apologize for that, but let's get over to the saw and let's get uh, let's get going. Before I start to cut these blanks down to size, I just kind of wanted to show you what I'm finding inside of this driftwood. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous inside of there. I, I'm, I'm anxious to see what kind of uh, pins and what kind of keychains this wood will make. I've got the blanks all cut to size and they're ready to be drilled for tubes, but I've noticed that a few of the pieces, since it was driftwood I'm assuming, are a little bit brittle. Things like that. Uh, there's a little crack there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and fill any cracks I can find with CA glue. I'm going to let this dry really well and then I'll come back and get these drilled out for the tubes. The glue is dried on all of the blanks. You can see some extra glue on the outside where I kind of filled some of the cracks. Uh, I'm ready to take these to the drill press and uh, get the barrel trimmer out and trim them down to the level of the tube. Uh, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and I'm going to hold my breath while I do this because some of this wood uh, I'm nervous might blow apart. So we're going to go real slow, get all these trimmed up, and then we're going to get them on the lathe and start turning. There we have it. I'm trimmed down on both ends. This blank's ready for the lathe. I'm getting ready to turn the slimline pin from the smaller of the two driftwood blanks. I've got my roughing gouge uh, as sharp as I can get it, and I'm just going to take my time and turn really slow. You can see there's like a little rock in there, uh, so definitely going to be wearing the face shield because there's probably going to be some stuff flying. But we're just going to take our time and try to uh, round these or true these up and see if we can't make a, a really beautiful uh, slimline pin.
tell you what, I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. It's got some beautiful grain, uh, but uh, sure is hard. I think I'm going to try to pick this rock out of here before it becomes too much of an issue. Um, see if I can find a little pick or, or an awl or something and get that out of there. Hmm, pretty good size little piece of gravel there. Definitely not something I want to take the edge off my blade. there I got to clean up. I just hope this isn't too deep. I may have to start applying some CA glue and trying to solidify that up a little bit. careful there how that split. I'm just going to try to turn it down a little farther. there I think I'm going to end up making this a true slim line make it very thin across the front and thin across the back uh, simply because shaping it can to be a little bit tough with this being broke you can see how that's moving when I touch it I think I am going to get some CA glue drop a little bit on there try to uh, lock that in a little bit okay I neglected to turn the camera on while I did this but all I did is take my medium thickness CA glue I took my fingernail and kind of pulled that piece of wood out just a tiny bit, shot some CA glue behind it, and uh, you can see it's rolling around the blank now. Uh, what, what's left to do is to hit it with a little bit of activator. All right, that should allow it to dry. I'm going to go ahead and fiddle around with the back half for a bit and just kind of let that be, and I'll come back and start working on cleaning this up in a few minutes.
All right, the back half's turning out really nice, giving it a pretty decent shape. I hope to be able to do the same with the front. I got this one little divot here, but I think a lot of that's going to disappear because I still have, I don't know, probably a sixteenth of an inch uh, on the bushings on that side and a little bit more uh, on this side. that looks pretty good still hate this spot here I think I'm right on the bushings down here uh, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, fill this in with some CA glue and uh, maybe press a little sawdust into there try to clean that up a little bit and maybe hide that with the clip because the rest of the pin is gorgeous I mean this side here is gonna look beautiful okay let's let that dry Actually, let's help that dry. Get my activator here. I'm gonna let this back half set for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and try to work on this front half. better it's holding in there pretty good just hoping I can clean up you can see these see these marks here I don't know how well you can see these marks I got have got to be out of balance a little bit or out of uh, I mean my uh, mandrel must be either too tight from the tailstock to where I've got a little flex in it or something because that just means I'm not turning true so let me I'm gonna shut the camera off fiddle around with my tailstock and see if I can't get it trued up a little better so that I can clean those off before I get down to the bushings. I've been fiddling with this and trying a few things and I've not been able to do anything with this blank. Since this is a slim line and since it uses the standard bushings on both ends, I'm going to swap this blank for this blank because this one's ready to be sanded. Actually I'll go ahead and clean this little piece up here. Then I'm going to swap them because the back blank seems to have no play whatsoever. So I don't know if I've uh, damaged my mandrel or what, but let's just see if we can swap them around and have any better luck. All right, see some discoloration there from the uh, accelerator. That'll come off when I sand. This back blank looks really good. Uh, like I said, I've got a, that's where that knot was, but I'll go ahead and I'll probably lay the clip right over top of that and uh, you'll never see it. This side of the blank is so beautiful. I want to, that's what I want you to see. So let me get these flopped around and see what we can do. All right, it's looking real good uh, along the bushings. I'm dead on on all of my bushings, so I'm real happy with that. I think what I'm going to do is sand this. It's I can feel a rough spot going this way. I can't going this way. I can. So I think what I'm going to do is flip the blank over uh, and start sanding uh, the opposite direction, and then I'll flip it between each grid of sandpaper, you know, back and forth to sand in opposite directions, and see if I can't smooth that out. I flip the blank around. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding with my 100 grit sandpaper. Uh, not going to make you watch the sanding process, but once again, I'm going to sand. This will make it the opposite direction. Then I'll flip the blank over and with the next grit and just continue to do that as I work through all of my grits. And if everything looks good when I'm done, we'll be ready to apply a finish. I always like to clean up the lathe before I do any finishing. That way I have less chance of, you know, bumping a bunch of dust and it 
fluffs up and gets all into my finish. Um, what I'm going to do now is use my denatured alcohol and just basically clean this blank off. On the rag here, and I'm just going to wipe side to side, try to get scrubbed really well inside of some of those crevices. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let me get her spinning and let's use a little bit more. Let's really get in there and kind of clean as best as we can. Just have a couple little little divots there, so I'm going to start off by putting a drop or two in there, uh, and then I'll spin the lathe up and apply the CA glue to the rest of the blank. Everything else looks really good; feels amazing. All right, I'm working with some thin CA glue here. Just going to put a dot, run it right across there, and then I'm slowly going to start this lathe up and just drool some on. Let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll apply a couple more coats. It's going to be really pretty. You know, I'm going to have a hard time filling these. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply. I can see now that I've got some CA glue on there. There's four little divots. I think I'm going to put a dot in each one of them and I'm going to let it dry and then I may go ahead and get my sanding pads and try to sand it down and just sort of level it out and then put the rest of the finish on. Otherwise, I don't know how I'm going to be able to fill those four. Let's see if we can do this. is thin CA glue here, so it's going to probably... There we go. All right, now I'm going to grab my sanding pads and we're going to sand this up. Just going to use my micro mesh here on the uh, just the front blank. All I want to do is basically uh, just, just take the, the bumps out where I put the CA glue. And I'm not going to sand heavily. It's going to be a real light sanding. I don't want to take a lot of material away. So. I can feel those bumps in the blank. And I, I just I don't want to sand a lot of material away, but I just want to take that high spot off. what she looks like okay I can see what we've got it's where the CA glue ran down to the bottom of the blank and dried and formed a little um, a little blister type looks real good up here um, I think what I'm gonna have to do this is gonna be a little tough to get off with the sanding pads I'm gonna go back and grab some hundred grit sandpaper and just quickly run through my grits again uh, concentrating in these areas here to see if I can get rid of that <laughs> Yeah, we're looking great. I got one scratch right there. There we go. Looks good. All right. I'm going to go grab my nonstick bushings, get them on here. I am going to clean this one more time with some denatured alcohol because I did uh, put a little more dust on the blank. So we're going to change our uh, bushings out, clean her up, and get some finish on it. Doesn't take very long for that to dry and we're ready for our next coat. I'm using a thin CA glue, so I'm gonna put a couple of more coats on, maybe two, maybe three more coats, and then I'll get my micro mesh and I'll sand it down to smooth it up, hit it with about three more coats, and then uh, we'll sand it with the micro mesh once more, take a look at it, and uh, it may or may not need some additional coats. We'll, we'll make a determination then. And uh, once we're done coating it with CA, we'll polish it. I'm going to go ahead and take my micro mesh and run through my grits. I am not going to put a lot of pressure on this. This is very light pressure, just an easy pass, wipe the slurry off, and move on. We just want to basically take any rough spots or high you know, ridges that might have occurred down and uh, should go pretty quick. Just like I said, a nice quick pass, just enough to clean it up. I like to wipe the slurry off each time. Okay. 
dulls it up a little bit, but that's okay. It feels, I mean, it's like a piece of glass. Um, I'll make sure I get any lint from my paper towels off of there. And uh, I'm ready for a couple more coats of CA. That was my third coat. I'm just going to take a peek at it. it. Looks really good. I think I'm going to go ahead and apply. I, I see no rough spots whatsoever. It feels smooth. I think I'm going to go ahead and apply three more coats. And if it doesn't get rough or doesn't get any ridges in it, I'm looking at it from the side and I can't see any flaws whatsoever. So I think I'm going to go ahead and apply three more coats. And if it looks good, um, I'll make a decision at that point whether I want to micro mesh it or go ahead and start buffing it. See what this looks like. It's completely dry. I'm looking at it from the side. I see no ridges, no scratches. It feels like glass. So I think I've done a good job of applying my CA. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and polish this blank up. For polishing, I like to use a little bit of one step. Just my polish of choice. Real easy to apply. Just get the lathe spinning. Shake it up really well and basically buff it in. Just like car wax, we'll let it sit for a minute and then we're going to grab a clean paper towel and we're going to buff it off. Take a look at it you can see the the light starting to glare in the blank that's how you know it's polishing doing a good job polishing um, i like to do two coat you cannot tell where those four divots were i mean that is just as smooth as glass i'm gonna go ahead and polish one more time and then we're going to uh get this pin put together i've got my blanks off the lathe i've gone ahead and laid out all my pieces uh, i got my pin press ready so let's go ahead and put this together we're going to start out with the nib and we're going to get that on the pin. I'm going to give it just a little tap and we'll back that off. Piece of corrugated cardboard to kind of protect the, the blank from this, this metal piece back here. And oh wow, that is a great fit. Perfect alignment with the nib. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and press the cap and the um, clip into the back of the pin. And the reason why I'm going to do that is I don't have to adjust the the uh, pin vise, so we're going to get that ready. Give it just a little tap, and like I said, we've got that little dot there. We're going to put that right underneath the uh, the um, clip. Make sure we're we're set. There we go. That was a little wormhole, and it's now gone cap looks great. I've got a really nice fit right here. I don't feel any separation between the clip, the cap, and the the blank. Now we're going to adjust our pin press a little bit. See if that'll work. And it's time to put the transmission in the pin. I may have adjusted too far. Let's see. Not too bad. We're going to give it a little tap. I always like to tap it to start it and then get my cardboard to help protect it. I'm going to push up to the tip of the brass. I never I never push up to the little line. They say in the instructions to push it into the little line. I've learned from experience that you don't want to push it that far in because you can't pull it back out very easily. I can always tap it in a little farther. So I go ahead and put it in up to the brass. Then I like to insert my refill and test my pin. And you can see I'm a little shy there. Let's see if I focus that a little bit better. There we go. Well, so we're going to pull the refill out, put it back in the press. Whoops, there we go. And I'm going to give it just a little, just a little tap. My hand's in the way there. I'm sorry. Let me back up here where you can maybe see a little better. There we go. I'm going to tap it about halfway. Now, I know that's probably not enough from experience, but that's okay. I, I would rather, like I said, slowly attach it. You can see that the ink is coming out not quite enough it looks like we're going to tap it again I'm going to go about half the distance between the blank and the line there it's going to be a little just a tiny little tap 
There we go. And it still needs to go just a little more. It's not coming out quite enough, so one more tap. Looks like I'm going to take it pretty much right up to the line, so the instructions were dead on this time, but better safe than sorry, right? Okay, there's that last little tap. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. That's perfect extension. Let's go ahead and drop the trim ring onto the pin. It's really hard to pick stuff up when you get that CA glue on your finger. <laughs> and a real nice transition between the bottom blank and the trim ring. Um, there we go. Let's get this on there. Oh, wow. This is a beautiful pen. Absolutely beautiful. I think I'm going to spin it a little bit. I think this side here was probably will probably line it up properly. I love the grain down here. It's as smooth as a piece of glass. The transmission functions smoothly. I'm very happy with this pen. I cannot wait to deliver it and see what the recipient thinks of it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I want to attempt to turn some of the keychains. I'm going to try to turn two at a time uh, because the keychain only needs you know one uh, one blank. Um, Let's just see how this goes. We're just going to once again go nice and slow. My uh, roughing gouge is sharp, so let's see what happens. Not too bad, coming together pretty well. Gonna have to watch that crack. You can see I filled it with some CA glue. Um, doesn't look like it goes all the way through, but we're just gonna have to keep an eye on it. Another one there. My hope is I'd like to get these trued up, then round the corners down and give them kind of a, a bulbous center. I don't know how else to describe it. That uh, gouge is just about gone. It's going to disappear here shortly. I'm still keeping an eye on this one. Uh, we may have to do a little more filling on that, uh, but so far it's not causing me a problem. That's a little bit of the uh, Gorilla Glue there that foamed out. Wow. All right, let's keep an eye on that one. I'm gonna to have to take it down a little farther in the center because of that uh, spot there. Okay, just a tiny bit more, and then I'm going to try to clean the shape up a little bit because I'm a little, little lopsided there. So, let's see what we can do.
right, I'm back. I tell you what, for driftwood, this has been some incredibly hard stuff to turn. It is dulling my blades like crazy, and I'm really not encountering a lot of sand, at least none that's visible, but uh, maybe it's impregnated into the, into the wood. I don't know. Oh yeah, that looks good. Um, let me just kind of round the edges over and then we'll mic out the cap in the top. I think that looks great. Um, I'm gonna go figure out uh, what my tolerances are and uh, be right back. All right, I've mic'd out the cap and the uh, top and I am just about dead on there, maybe a tiny bit fat and darn near dead on at this end as well. So this one's good. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to sand it up and go with that. This one is still a little too large. I'm going to have to take it down on the front and the back, uh, but just ever so slightly. I don't want to do a whole lot so we're just going to go real, real slow and real careful. Stop and test. I'm dead on at the back end. This end here needs just a little more off of it, and plus I can see where I kind of flat spotted it there, so I'm gonna clean that up. I think we're there. Uh, I say we get our sandpaper and we flip back and forth and sand these in uh, opposite directions and get them cleaned up. I have flipped my blanks over so that I'm effectively sanding in the opposite direction. I'm just going to go ahead and run through my grits, sand these up, get them nice and smooth. Um, I will flip them between each grit and I'm going to come back after I'm done sanding and uh, we'll take a look at uh, finishing these blanks. I finished sanding and uh, gone ahead and cleaned the lathe up to get so I'm ready to apply some finish. Um, I want to take a little bit of denatured alcohol now and wipe my blanks down really good because what I'm looking for is any flaws in the blanks uh, where I might need to fill with CA glue uh, prior to finishing. All right, so let's I want to make sure I clean really well around this because this will have to have some CA in it get any dust off there. Let's uh, get this lathe spinning and let's put a little more denatured alcohol on there and just finish cleaning these blanks. All right. Looks good. There's still, still a few rough spots. The blanks feel really good when you rotate the lathe. You don't feel um, those gaps but when you go back and forth you're catching the end of this one and that one right there so I'm gonna get some CA and just see if I can't sort of fill that in a little bit all right I'm gonna drop a little something on the lathe here because I have a funny feeling this might get a little messy got my accelerator I've got my CA um, start with the back flank here let's just get some CA around this area here where we got that little piece sticking up and let me get some accelerator on there that stuff bubble. <laughs> All right, is there any other spots on the back one? Yeah, it looks like right here we could use a little bit. So let's run a little, little, just a little bit on there. Whoa, a little more than I want it. Thin CA glue is what I'm working with here. Not the best stuff, but it's all I have. Look at that, how it's just, 
have boils that CA glue. That's okay, we'll sand that right off. I'm just trying to get the catches out of there and make it smooth. Looks good on the back half. The front half just has this little deal here, so let's uh, see if we can, there we go. Okay, flip it over, let's get the front. Okay, and then let's go for the side here. Ooh, a little more than I want it. All right. That's wild to watch that smoke. I really, it, it's really nasty down there. I think I'm gonna have to take a tool and clean this off. I don't wanna try to sand all this off. Let me uh, make sure that all the glue has been dried. And uh, let me get set back up with my tool rest and we'll clean that up and then we'll sand it off and see how it looks. This is where we need to be really careful. This is all dry now, it's hard as a rock. I don't want to take anything off the blank. I just want to clean up the glue. All right, there we go. Now, I don't want to cut the blank. I just want to take the high spots off. bit more I just very careful with this I don't want to get aggressive all right that's about as far as I want to go I'm afraid I'm gonna start getting into the wood uh, so I'm gonna basically go back to my sandpaper and I'm going to sand along the grain, which will, so the 100 grit will take most of that out. And then I'll quickly run through the grits just to smooth it back out. And uh, that should clean it up. And I'll be back to to uh, inspect and fill. But that looks pretty good. That's, that's pretty solid. I cleaned up the blanks and sanded them. You can kind of still see remnants of the CA glue. Uh, but it's perfectly smooth. And that will disappear as I put a finish on it. So I'm ready to start applying my finish. Give that a second to dry. Let's take a look at the blank. I mean, just look at that blank. It's absolutely gorgeous. These are going to make beautiful keychains. That would have made a beautiful pin, but uh, there just wasn't enough room to make, or enough wood to make 10 pins. And you can see that, but you can't feel it. It's filled in completely with CA glue. And <laughs> those things feel like glass. I don't know that the micro mesh is going to make a bit of difference, but I am going to go ahead and run through. Uh, my grits and rough it up a little bit and we'll get a few more coats on there. Keychains are, are generally very easy to assemble. You've got uh, a little cap at the bottom of the keychain and you've got the top section of the keychain with the hole in it that the uh, ring goes through and there's no top or bottom so you can basically just pick whatever you like uh, for your end and your cap and I really like all this extra brown down at this end so I think what I'm going to do is make this the bottom cap and the top part here is where I'll put the uh, the ring. So let's take our cap, seat it in the hole there, we'll tap, and finish her off. See how nice that is? Got a nice fit right along the cap. All right, let's get the the ball for the top half of the chain. We'll give it just a tap. Sure it goes in there straight. I don't want to drive it in crooked. All right, and then we'll just assemble the ring, which is just a matter of getting a hold of it. And there you have it. 
Let's do the other one. I really like how this, I think this should be the bottom with the little cap down here and the chain, the chain part should be up here. Just, I think the blank looks the best that way. So I'm going to Oh yeah, we got a real nice fit down there. I like that. Let's go with the cap, or the top part. The ball, I guess we'll call that. Slide this piece of cardboard back in there. These are really, really pretty. I, I think uh, they're gonna be very popular. All right, there you have it. Two keychains ready to go. Only eight more to go. I won't make you watch the other eight being made, but uh, I will come back and shoot a quick shot at the end to show you all ten of them. Here's a quick shot of the pen that I made from the LaPush Beach Driftwood. I'm extremely happy with it. I love the figuring down at the front end of the pen. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful, and I cannot wait to deliver it because I think the recipient is going to absolutely love it. These are the ten keychains that I made from the LaPush Beach Driftwood. I'm extremely happy with how they turned out. Many of them have a great deal of figure in the wood. I was really surprised uh, and didn't know what I was going to get into. Um, very happy with how they turned out. I'd like to sincerely thank you for joining me in the shop today. This was a really fun project. It, it's always nice when you've got a project that has a story behind it or is sentimental to someone in some way. It just makes it that much more special. If you like what you've seen today, please hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Ask me a question. I try to answer all comments or respond to all comments and answer all questions. Also, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to hit that subscribe button down there. That way, every time I post a video, you'll be notified and you can check it out right away. Once again, I would sincerely like to say thank you for joining me today in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon.